No? No. Why not? Yeah, you. What, is, what were you saying about no, me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we are, family. What's up, my people? We got an error message on there, so I was like, what's happening? <laughs> and Janelle, she was about to like walk over and slap me. I, no, I wouldn't do that. I'm the nice one. On air and off. You're the air. nice one? Mm -hmm. Who says that? Everybody. That's why it's hashtag people Everybody. know. Everybody. <laughs> hey, uh, before we get started today talking about the Teddy Roosevelt statue and its proposed removal from the front of the Museum of American, no, the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, just outside of Central Park. Uh, we want to remind you, this is listener supported. Like, have you watched this? Brian General Overtime, whether you're on YouTube right now watching this live or whether you're on Facebook watching this live, we're in both places at once. Try to just Aww. comprehend that. Uh, know that we're listener supported and your donations make this happen. Why are you doing that? Is Catherine there a puppy? Catherine gave this morning and Catherine says she uh, she wanted to let the call the person know that the Brian Janelle Show in Cleveland are a great service to the area. And then she says she's team... Janelle and Brian, because both of them together make a difference. Oh. Mm. And, and the last You're not shall be question first. The order? No, she actually L said. The Brian last and shall be first. <laughs> she said Brian and Janelle. Yeah. Okay, so she the first one's the best one. <laughs> wow, Brian. I'm removing my my point. No, yeah, exactly. Right, my positions. So, would you consider a gift to keep this going? It's super easy to get it in. Just go to moodyradio.org/cleveland. Moodyradio.org/cleveland. Give your gift there. Or you can also text the word SHARE to 800-600-9624, 800-600-9624. So, let me just say at the outset Ooh, of this. The comments are coming. Go ahead. Are we you talking about Teddy? You better straighten up and say whatever you're going to say. About Teddy? Uh, are they talking about Teddy? Uh, no, actually no. Okay, good. say hi. You hi. got scared. Well, no, it's, it's, and I should say Mr. President, President Roosevelt, not Teddy. We're not a first name basis kind of You guy. have, he has a son named Teddy, so he just slipped up. It, yeah, that, that's We love that President Teddy Roosevelt. It's, uh, it's amazing to me how quickly on both sides people get so passionate about a statue they didn't know existed perhaps yesterday morning. Yeah, yeah. I was unaware of the existence of this statue yesterday mm -hmm. morning. Were you aware of it? Mm -mm. I've never been to that museum. I wasn't aware of it. You've been to Central Park? No, I haven't. I'm sure I have. I've been I, to I lived Park. in New York four years. I'm sure I have. I don't remember. Um, I was little. But I was going to say, and I'm not even that familiar with Teddy Roosevelt. So the passion, like he's not like George Washington or. Most people, likely, could not name more than one accomplishment of Teddy Roosevelt in his presidency. Not at all. Even what you said about the Natural History Museum and his connection, I had no clue. I love Metro Parks and, and National yeah, I mean, Parks. Most I people remember no him as a conservationist where he is I didn't. <laughs> almost single-handedly responsible for the creation of the national park system and, the That's awesome. and expansion of it. And aren't we all grateful for that? But So the statue issue. Before we get to the statue issue, there's a couple things I want to talk about because I love history. And it's ultimately this idea of the hero or villain debate, and that is a not a great label for it, nonetheless, we learned today. But with any historical figure, one of the most fun things to do is take a look at it and see, is this person worthy of our praise yeah. or our condemnation? And I mean, you could do it with anyone in history at all. And we do it in the scriptures all the time. In fact, let us not forget that, that the Lord was very clear to us in scripture about the flaws of people like King David, Moses, and others who all were flawed people, Paul, Peter, because the point of the Bible is to point to the fact that we're all sinners in need of a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus Christ. His life, death, and resurrection is the only reason we can be with our Lord and Savior in heaven someday when we die. So with that in mind, like the, the scars of people is a normal thing to talk about. But keep in mind, the Bible also places people in categories, so to speak, of hero and villain in some yeah. respects. No one will doubt that Jezebel is not considered a great, great woman. Okay, uh, look at the New Testament. Ananias and Sapphira. Is anyone going to be doing crowdfunding for their statues to be placed in Israel? King Herod, uh, Pharaoh. I mean, come on. Like yeah. th this is not a like. It's easy for us to say that there is there's ways to distinguish between those things. Now, before we get to the Roosevelt statue in particular today, I'd like to address a couple arguments about statues that drive me batty, as they say. The, so I think you, they annoy you too. Yeah. First argument, well, yeah, Brian, if you take down one statue, 
You gotta take them all down. All of them! Yeah. Uh, that's a really false... What's the argument behind that? It's the it, it's a it's a false proposition that if I advocate for the taking down of a particular statue, that means that every statue can be taken down. Goodbye, all statues everywhere. Okay. When the, when the reality is, whether you want to admit it or not, we all have a line that we will draw and say, "Well, okay, take that one down." For example, all of America cheered when a statue of Saddam Hussein was toppled in Iraq. So the idea that if you take down one statue, no one was saying, wait a minute, if you take down that Saddam Hussein statue, we've got to take down all the statues. No one is making that argument because that's ridiculous. We have a line, whether we want to admit it or not, of people that deserve to be honored with a statue and people that don't. And there's a mushy middle. There is a mushy middle, and part of what I was saying online, on air, is that the ones here in this country all depend on who's telling the story and who decides what comes down. That's true. Because... The people who are, to some, heroes, to others who know the full story, you know, it's like, really, that's a hero? So I think it's, it's depending on the angle of this, the history of that person is told from. And I had Which more time. you brought up Martin Luther, but we don't Yeah, there's, there. there's so many people you, you can do this with, and we did it on the air at length. Uh, Martin Luther, a hero of the Reformation, a guy who reminded the world that our salvation comes through faith alone, not works. He translated the Bible into a common language, but he was also like disgustingly anti-Semitic. L- look it up; it's it's abhorrent to the point that I would understand if a Jewish person decided to call him a villain. I don't think he is, but I would get it if they did. You see where it's well, eh, it's hard to, hard to discern here. The second argument that drives me, drives me nuts about statues is Brian. When you take down statues, you're erasing history. Wrong. That's not true. That came up a lot in the text, by the way. Uh, here's the thing there is such a thing as erasing history in fact if you read George Orwell's classic novel 1984 one of the the keys to success for Big Brother in that in that thing is a changed history not toppled statues went into textbooks changed and erased not only erased things but recreated them and told lies about them and made those the truth so there is power in history but keep in mind that when you remove a statue, a statue generally is a is a signi- is is not a historic reminder. Most statues are in place as a position of honor in society. If you remove a statue, let's just say, of um, it, let's just say in, in Baghdad of Saddam Hussein, does that erase his existence from history? <coughs> Far from it. You'll still learn about him in Iraq. You'll still learn about him all over world history in textbooks. That cannot be erased, and it is not erased by the removal of the statue. So I just don't want to hear that one. It really is not a relevant argument because removing a statue with President Roosevelt on it will do nothing to remove him from American history at all. In fact, if you just walk in the doors of the museum we're talking about, he's honored there specifically multiple times. So we cannot say it'll change that. So you're going to be in charge of this museum, and I'll get to this as quick as I can. You. You're you're the new president of the museum. You've just been appointed because of this controversy, and you get to decide whether we're taking it down. So, here's the scoop. Uh, It's a bronze statue of President Theodore Roosevelt, and he's flanked by a Native American man and an African man. The African man, by the way, is basically naked. So this is not, it's hard to know exactly how it's depicted, but both of them are depicted in a subservient position behind a powerful president. Yeah. And it clearly symbolizes, at the time, colonialism and represents subjugation of those two people groups. And so, um, here's what the museum said. They, they've decided to remove the statue. Quote, over the last few weeks, our museum community has been profoundly moved by the ever-widening movement for racial justice that has emerged after the killing of George Floyd, said the past president. She's current president, but for today's discussion, Ellen V. Futter, as the president there, she said, we've watched as the attention of the world and the country has increasingly turned to statues as powerful and hurtful symbols of systemic racism. Now, this is the key point. Thank you. Yeah. Miss Futter <laughs> made clear that the museum's decision was based on the statue itself. Hear me. The, the decision was based on the statue itself, namely its hierarchical composition, and not on Roosevelt, whom the museum continues to honor as a, quote, pioneering conservationist. 
So, in fact, they even, in the removal, have done a compensatory gesture, they're calling it, in that they're changing the name of the Hall of Biodiversity in the museum to Roosevelt Hall in honor of President Teddy Roosevelt. So not only is he still honored inside the museum, he's going to be more honored inside the museum. But the museum has agreed, and the city of New York has agreed, that this particular statue has a hierarchical composition and should be removed for that purpose, not having anything to do with Roosevelt himself. So, you're in charge. Remove it? I can't wait to hear your answer. So, Angela says it could be a catalyst to rewrite history. Danella said when we were talking about it depends who decides. Angie says yes, who decides? What did Janet say? Janet says Brian is my hero. I need a hero. Yeah. And Janet also said something else. I think it is the respect issue. And then Mike said the past couple of generations uh, have not been taught respect or even taught disrespect, and here we are. Although, Mike, I love you, brother. You know that. I think somebody could say to you, past generations were not taught history in an appropriate sense and were not made aware of some terrible parts of America's past and therefore don't know how to appropriately handle history without blind obedience and blind allegiance. And even it depends, like, yeah. Angie says, uh, wait, hold on. Uh, Donella says, right, Janelle. I was saying yes this morning when you said that on air in terms of it depends who tells the story. It depends who's in charge. History is written by the victor. take it down. Always. History is written by the victor, and that's what's a little... Except, by the way, in the American Civil War. <laughs> that's not how it's told. We still, well, yeah. we still celebrate those who advocated yeah. for slavery. But anyway, it's a different, yeah. different topic. Oh, Myrna says, the museum's president emphasized that the decision was made based on the statue's hierarchical composition. Roosevelt is on horseback, flanked by African, an African man and a Native American man on foot, rather than the simple fact that it portrayed Roosevelt. The museum, co-founded by Roosevelt's father, will keep Roosevelt's name on its Theodore Roosevelt Memorial Hall. So, like you said, it's not about Roosevelt. Angie's President Roosevelt. Uh, Angie says, yes, not on the former president, but the, the way it can be perceived when looked at. And do you see why we picked this story? Because it forces nuance. This is not a, everyone gets to subjectively view a historical figure's value in history. This is quite literally a, a, a place saying it's not about the president, it's the statue itself and its depiction of people and subjugation. Yeah. And even... I don't know if you realize this, but Theodore Roosevelt IV, the great-grandson of the 26th president, is on the Museum Board of Trustees, and he thinks it should come down because he thinks it doesn't represent his grandfather, his yeah. great-grandfather well. Yeah. I, Angie, and what you're saying, Brian, um, and that's the thing. She says it, it's how it could be perceived when looked at. I think the problem is, if you weren't Brian, you're just a regular white guy, just random white person. So you're saying white I'm, person. I'm, I'm an exceptional white guy? You are exceptional. <laughs> You could look at that and it won't bother yes. you. <laughs> oh, wow. It won't bother you, right? You could just be like, okay, whatever, President Roosevelt. There is a minority, maybe, that look at it and get offended. And maybe their voices. Like, it's a, that's why I'm saying it depends on who perceives it. Because somebody can look at Angie and say, yeah, the way we perceive it, it's fine. What's wrong with it? And it's see, so subjective. And it's all about who's in charge and what part of the story is told. The part of the story that's told is his accomplishments, right? And so with that statue, the, hi the highlight of the people that are there and how they're viewed, it depends on who's looking at the statue. Do you see what I'm saying about her? Per she's like, it depends how you perceive it when you look at but it depends on the person perceiving it. But see, and, and, and in light of that, people forget that one of, one of America's founding principles is to avoid the tyranny of the majority. Wow. Right? I've never heard that said. No, but that's what that, it's called. No, I've heard it said, but not in this context. It's well, never applied in this context. Remember that the creation of the United States Senate, not based on population, but each state gets two senators. Yes. In, in order to avoid the tyranny of the majority. Yeah. That There's checks and balances in place in American government to avoid that very thing. So I think what you're trying to say is 
it does matter if there's a minority of people in terms of number that find it offensive. Yeah. We can't just say the majority should, likes it. Yes, it should matter, but it usually doesn't because people say, well, it's fine and it's fine. And because it's fine with every, with the majority, the minority is looked at like, what's wrong with you? It's like you said with, you brought up a scripture. Can you share the scripture that you said you didn't bring up putting others' needs above our own? Because I think it could help as a believer frame this correctly. Because, right? Because yeah. you, it may not matter to you, but it matters to other people. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, right? It's the, the, the consistent principle of scripture of valuing other people, valuing human life and valuing other people. It's the uh, love God, love your neighbor, Consider others as more important than yourself. Paul says, you know, even when he's talking about eating meat, if it's going to hurt your brother, you just stop eating it. Yeah, you because know, you don't want to do that. And so, I think if we apply that principle here, I'm not talking about like fringe crazy. No, yeah, that's true. Because you could because there there's somebody offended by everything. Yeah. And I don't think this is that. No. If you see a a, a fair measure of people, reason people who love the Lord who see it and are hurt by it, are you not violating the principle by going, I don't care what you think, it's history, leave it. Yeah, especially because of the distinction that you brought up. By the way, Danella loves me. Danella, you are my girl. Let me go visit you. Again? She's like awesome. She wants you to stop. Oh my gosh, yes, your boys, I remember. Oh, I remember so awesome. Danella. Say hi to your boys. So even the distinction that you brought up with, I've been to the Museum of Natural History. I go to history museums all the time. To see that statue in the museum would make me say, oh, yeah, this was history, and we need to know it so that we're, make sure, we're sure not to repeat it. The statue in the front and a lot of the other statues that people are talking about, you've said those are for honor, not for history. Right. So we're honoring, like, most of our country should be like, uh, no, we don't honor that anymore. That's not who we are. I mean, we went through a, a war about this. Right, so it should be placed somewhere else to frame it, the message, the right way, right? Because, uh, I don't know. Yeah, um, I mean... I, because of what you said, what a statue does outside. What, what, what's wild is, I mean, why not just take it down and move it inside? Yeah, I would take that. Oh, yeah. Because the purpose of a, a museum is yeah. distinctly different than the purpose of a statue. In my yes. humble opinion. Yeah. But at, at the same time, I... Uh, I was thinking about this earlier, and I, I believe so much that Christians have to be people of truth, the people that seek accuracy and information. And were this just a statue of Teddy Roosevelt, what would I say? Just Teddy. Like Teddy Roosevelt on horseback. Yeah. Uh, I did some reading again to remind myself of his legacy. Yeah. He had some terrible ideas on eugenics. He uh, really advocated colonialism, American colonialism. He kind of invented it. Speak softly, carry a big stick. And he went out and he conquered a bunch of areas for the United States to have territories. And yet his work with the national parks is so yeah. admirable. Like, I don't know that I'd support this at all if yeah. it were just Teddy Roosevelt. What the museum is being asked to do and what actually the discussion is, even though most of America is screaming about Teddy Roosevelt, the real issue at hand is this statue, this particular statue, yeah. not the president himself, No. not even necessarily each individual person of the three on there. This is about the symbolism of the statue itself. Together, what it, what it sends. And as a follower of Jesus, am I able to intellectually really examine what's actually taking place here? No one's asking me to dishonor Teddy Roosevelt. We're talking about this statue. Mike says, Auschwitz is still there to remind people of the horror that happened in the past and to teach people of that. Leave the statues where they are and educate. And then somebody responded and said, Teresa, hey girl, she said, but Germany removed all of their symbols and statues, apologized, and placed these things inside of a museum. This is a part of history and should be kept where we keep other historical artifacts, our libraries, and museums. And, and I, I, I will say I appreciate that Mike's sentiment and what Mike you're trying to say. Yeah, because you brought that up. Actually. Because really it is, but it is a dangerous principle for somebody to want to rewrite history or erase it. Yeah. I mean the Nazis themselves did that with book burnings. And, yeah. I mean we don't advocate for that by any means. I don't think Christians ought to advocate for that. So much of scripture is history. Yeah. 
But um, at the same time, I, I really do understand more. It was Teresa. T Teresa makes the point that I ultimately try to make, is that we have to stop thinking of statues as the sole place. Like, that statue is not the only place on Earth where one can learn about Teddy Roosevelt. Far from it. Take a few steps inside, and you're going to learn about his conservation efforts. Uh, open up any history book. Like, no one is advocating for the erasing of history. And the removal of statues had, really has nothing to do with erasing history. It has to do with who we place, quite literally, on a pedestal. Yeah. And what we quite literally paste, or place on a pedestal. Yeah. And doesn't it matter the imagery we place there? Vita, good morning. Man, I like your cover, your uh, Facebook cover with uh, LeBron and his wife. That was an awesome picture. I actually know the person. No, no, no. I know uh, he's like no he's local the person that took that picture obviously because it was it was good it was his the son playing anyways Vita she's my girl don't listen to Brian uh, Vita says I'm probably totally undervaluing the topic on some level but we can just move all those controversies to a new museum of modern study of race and politics in America and share the stories there so the historical alternative view isn't lost but let's also tell the truth on why those statues were in our view as as art of the majority whites and the bigotry that may have influenced them. Such a powerful point, Vita. Such an important point. Thank you for that. That's why you, my girl. You so smart. And see, that's Hashtag what I'm talking Team about. Hashtag Team Janelle. Here. Woo. But and 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 that's what it is. It's. <gasps> you like, mentioned that. Well, about no, but but what we can't do is take somebody who says this particular statue I find to be inappropriate and offensive, so I advocate for it being removed. What we do in, in America in 2020 is we take that person, we go, you hate all statues, you want to erase history. Yeah, yeah. That's not true. Yeah. Uh, or you just want to go and knock down statues and spray paint them. Because there's disgusting pictures online of mobs of people tearing down statues and vandalizing them. Yeah, no. Which, by the way, Christian. Somebody asked, what do we say about that? Well, I mean, that's an easy one, yeah. quite frankly. Because God, Romans 13, Peter talks about it in one of his epistles. We, we're to honor government authority. We're not supposed to go break laws unless they violate God's law. And we, it is considered vandalism, which is against the law to deface public property like that and private property. So of course that's the wrong way to do it, which is why Vita's making so much sense and saying, don't destroy it. No one's saying melt it. It's take it from its pedestal and put it in a museum, preserve it. So somebody is a dear friend of overtime is concerned about why talk about it and how we're stirring the pot instead of encouraging dialogue. Uh, Roseanne says... Interesting. How is this not encouraging dialogue? That's what I'd want to know. Roseanne says, good morning. The place is a museum. Why don't we just burn all of them down? That's how ridiculous this topic is in my humble opinion. Never mind the fact that uh, most people even realize of what a statue represents. Uh, and, and Roseanne, we love you. I know you're here so much. I'm so glad you're here. It's so good that you're here. Um, and I, I want you to be honest with me. If, if you're hearing that sentiment from us, I'd like you to, you ought to rebuke us and we ought to repent. Because I would never advocate for the burning of anything. Myrna responded. Unless it was firewood. Myrna responded to her and said, could you please explain what this statue represents? Because I don't understand what the Native American and African male under him mean. And then Roseanne said, what I understand from what I have read is that they are not meant to be under him, but are actually intended to represent his friendship with Africa and the Americas. I believe that we are crossing lines that we cannot come back from when we start doing this. And I'm French Canadian by birth, so believe me when I say I have no vested interest in Roosevelt or any other historical monument. I remember Christian friends who applauded when the Taliban started removing statues and tearing them down from places of worship. And we all know how that turned out. What if people were being told to take torture rooms out of post-anti-apartheid uh, South Africa? What would the reaction to that be? And these monuments are historical monuments, and it is in a museum. I, I think Roseanne makes some valid historical points here. I think you make some good points. The only thing I would say is that I'm not certain that those are parallel historical examples. Because I wouldn't put the, the intentional, careful removal of a statue by the museum in the city of New York on the same playing field as a Taliban tearing down statues. I think that's, generally speaking apples and oranges. 
because I don't think any Christian person ought to advocate the mob removal of statues. No. I don't see anything in Scripture that would advocate for that. So, yeah. So why talk about it? We're stirring the pot. We're not encouraging dialogue. That's a concern Roseanne has. Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to encourage dialogue. I feel like this is dialogue. Uh, but again, if it's not, please, in love, rebuke us. And we I'd love to make this a better dialogue. I feel like what we're trying to do is remove the partisanship that's dominating this and look at it for what it is. The museum's saying it's not about Roosevelt. In fact, we're going to honor him when we take this down and name something else after him, even though we got like already six things named after him. Uh, it's this statue we're, we're removing and... and you know, let's move on with life. I think that's the issue at hand, but it's, it helps us really examine this from a more particular perspective. Also, um, we can't, we're not going to come up with solutions, and I'm probably going to say something that's like we, it's not going to satisfy everybody, but I like that we're at a moment in history where more people are welcomed into the conversation. Mm -hmm. Statues that have been put up, put up, the development of curriculum in America, and all of that, there haven't there has not been a diversity of voices in terms of what's important what should be honored what should be celebrated and i think it's okay it's growth for a country yeah. to go there and to reevaluate and to revisit especially inviting more voices to say like inviting more voices to say should we still honor this is this who we are should we shift it and put it somewhere else so that it's in the context of history versus celebration and have different people from different perspectives speak into that that has not been the case for for like ever in our country right so, right and, and i yeah i wonder if there's a fundamental disagreement about the purpose of a statue yeah i think like based our, on our conversation here i think and is. i'd love to get your reaction to this our presupposition is that statues are not historical markers they are literally placing historical figures on a pedestal in a position of honor. Okay, so if that's the case, I think it's not a question of history, it's a question of honor. Yeah. But we may fundamentally disagree with the question or the, with that presupposition in and of itself. See what I mean? So if that's possible, people could disagree on that front. Uh, somebody, if, can you scroll down a little bit? Somebody said something I want to respond to. It was a good point. Uh, no, keep going. Was it Lydia said it? Uh, what was it about? Scroll down. Oh, down. I'm sorry. Down and up is weird on social media, though. Sometimes. Are you talking about that? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. What was it about? I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, I was trying. I, I remembered seeing it and I liked it. Lydia. Sheila, maybe. Was it Sheila? Scroll down just a touch. Sheila, right here. Yeah, there you go. No matter how a, how good a person is, they will always be a villain in someone's story. And that is one of my favorite points of this. Like, when I was teaching social studies, that's why I would do this exercise with students, the hero or, or villain, because it actually, that's the point. There are people who are, without doubt, objectively evil. No one's going to except for crazy people for the honoring of Adolf Hitler, Pol Pot, Joseph Stalin, Caligula, Nero. We're not going to celebrate them. And there's some historical figures that, like, it'd be very hard to find any someone who would not want to honor them. Like, yeah. No statues of Mother Teresa here, right? But most of the debate in history is here, in this mushy middle. Yes. And the reason, again, I've said this in the morning and I'm saying it again, that gray matters because it depends on where, what perspective you are. Like, um, the owning of slaves compared to, that a person has had, compared to their accomplishments, who you talk to, guys, of that person. You talked about Martin Luther and how different a Jew would see him that's mm -hmm. been through the Holocaust versus somebody that's not so that's where I'm uncomfortable and I think that was your point the middle is what's uncomfortable because it's so subjective and the, and I think the easiest part to have a civil discussion on this is to acknowledge that there's subjectivity in place acknowledge it and acknowledge um, the, uh, the minority voice 
Do you see what I'm saying? Acknowledge, right. like, man, for for there are voices that are silent, that are that it hurts them, it offends them, and it should matter, and we should listen, because it hasn't been the case for a long time. Even parts of history has been like suppressed, and so I I'm encouraged by what's going on, and I I hope moving forward we we do that more. And if you want to have a harder debate, go look at the the balanced history of two presidents. Go look up Woodrow Wilson yeah. and Andrew Jackson. Yeah. And those two are very complex. Yeah. Um, and Rosanna, I think, is making some good points here that we ought to talk about. So Rosanna says, Brian, what I have heard for weeks now on Moody and the national media is not dialogue. It is pitting one side against the other, and there are no sides except the side of righteousness and truth, as far as I'm concerned. It's like saying we have interfaith dialogue if we sit at the table and we already come to the table believing that we're right. They are wrong, and we're going to somehow show them how wrong they are. That would not be a dialogue about faith. That would be a monologue, which is what I feel and many feel these discussions have been. Trying to bring one people group to its knees because there have been crimes and sins committed is not okay. It's never how I'd want. Can you leave it there, oh, Janelle? Oh, yeah. uh, That's certainly not ever one of our goals, Roseanne. And if that's how you felt about our discussions, uh, I sincerely apologize. That's not what we're looking for. We love you, and we've had so much fun with you over the months. I hope you keep coming back, sister. Um, it's interesting how I think a lot of people in Christian dialogue, they don't feel it's dialogue unless I agree with them. Like in a sense, because I host a radio show, and you host a radio show, that we really aren't allowed to have an opinion. Yeah. Yeah guided by scripture unless we agree with you and then you love that we have it that's one of the oddities of what we do and even people will be like I don't want to listen to your opinions I don't listen to preaching and teaching programs but the oddity of that is when you listen to a preaching and teaching program you're listening to a pastor's opinion of how they interpret the scriptures Yeah. and so and we like it when we agree with it and we don't when we don't I, I confess I have strong opinions on things like racism and I have strong opinions on things like history, but I'm definitely open to learning. Um, I don't know how else to address that. I think Nate had something he wanted to say to me as well. So No, Ryan, forgive me. Yeah, so Ryan says, um, Brian, I have greatly reduced my listening to you all because you shoot down all that you disagree with. I hear you saying that you're promoting dialogue and want to be rebuked in this, but shoot down those who try. And then someone responded, Angela, responded and said, and the topics are controversial and not the Christ-centered conversations I tuned in to hear before. I get enough polarizing topics from the news. Um, interesting. We, we've been charged by Moody Radio uh, to talk about today's issues from a biblical perspective, and we operate under the presupposition that we ought to take the lens of Scripture and use it in our lives to look at everything. And so that's what we're doing here. Um, goodness shoot down ideas Ryan I'd love you sh sh share with me an example of this where we can have a better dialogue together I'd love for you to show me brother something uh, that you felt was sh was uh, shot down because I'd love to hear about it and I'd love to engage with you on that maybe you could do it here you could send me an email you could go to brianandjanelle.org send us an email I'd love to dialogue with you on this there I'd be happy to do it here though um yeah, I, I, I guess I just have to say I love you and I don't, I don't understand what you're saying because I feel like it's the opposite of what we've been trying to do at least. Do you have anything you want to throw in there? I just want to say in terms of Christ-centered discussion, um, the Bible, I think because we're so far removed from issues that people in the New Testament were dealing with, it doesn't feel as polarizing. But for Jesus to talk about the Samaritan or to talk about women the way he did or to talk about the poor, I think we would have felt the same way if we would have been sitting in a crowd listening to Jesus mm -hmm. and the issues of the day. But it is uncomfortable, so I get it. And we're doing the best we can. And I think dialogue is important. But see, here's the key thing. Uh, can you scroll up again to Roseanne? Roseanne, you said... Just for the record, Brian, you know, my circle of life is very diverse. I, I totally, you don't even have to say that, Roseanne. We, we believe you on that. Um, it's upsetting to feel that even Christian media is lacking wisdom. And here's where I, I, I would love to hear from you, Roseanne. And Ryan brought up some concerns, too. Yeah. 
please, what have I said, what has Janelle said that's unbiblical? I think it gets down to that, right? Um, or what have we said that's unwise in your opinion? Let's dialogue on that because, um, yeah, there's a lot of things I don't like, but as I say that Luther indicated, his conscience is captive to the Word of God. So whether I like it or not, my conscience by the Holy Spirit is compelled to lean towards Scripture. So we can disagree on things, love each other, but at the end of the day, you know, I don't want, I also don't think it's necessarily reasonable to, to indicate that Janelle and I are lacking wisdom and are being divisive without giving specific examples of positions for, and topics for which we've talked about that we don't bring in Scripture and don't represent the gospel of Jesus Christ. It seems just a bit unfair, you know what I mean? We love you, we want you to come here, but I just because just we're sitting here beyond this side of the camera, I, I think it would be reasonable to discuss specifics and not lob giant accusations. And there's a lot of you saying nice things, God bless you, you don't need to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. And Ryan said your comments right before, my, I don't, brother, I'm sorry this is delayed, I don't remember what specific comment that was. I've said far too many comments today, perhaps. And, and Mike, by the way, Mike is a good friend. Mike Gonzalez is here on a regular basis. And Mike and I have had days where we agree and days where we disagree. I'd love for you, if you're frustrated with me or Janelle, talk to Mike. Because Mike is a good friend of this show. And he doesn't always, yeah, like you said, agree. To be honest with you, there are issues, that current event issues, that I disagree with with Len. You know? Oh, Sarah and I disagree about something as simple as simple as how the government responded to the coronavirus. Yeah. We dramatically disagree. Yeah. And one of the... I think it's good to... Like, it, just because we disagree, it's not a topic that he and I have to say, you know, let's not... We can't talk about it because we'll just get angry. Like, to talk and to say, man, okay, you want to see it this way? I think it's that thing of giving people the benefit of the doubt and knowing you want the best for our country, you want the best for believers... You just look at it differently. I'll pray for you and move on. That's the, that's our view when we come here and we share topics. We're family and we're like, man, what do you think? Oh, you're, we come from different backgrounds, so we're going to disagree. And I think it's okay. Yeah. And hopefully Matt, uh, modeling that for us to learn how to do that in our circles. And I, I acknowledge it's possible that there's p people here who don't think that we should, that Christians ought to talk about current events. Yeah, that is true. Uh, and that's okay. If you think we shouldn't, God bless you. But here we believe that the light of Scripture should be held up to every aspect of our lives, and we should conform our lives to Scripture in every way. And let's, uh, I love that, that Ryan and Roseanne are offering some dissenting opinions here and challenging. Those are good things to do. Mm -hmm. Be kind to one another in these comments the rest of the day. Uh, this is great stuff. So, Roseanne and Ryan, thank you. Roseanne's responding and saying, Brian and Janelle, you have not said anything unbiblical. All that I am expressing is that I do not see wisdom in bringing up a dialogue. And a dialogue involves two sides speaking with each other, not yelling at each other. The minute you're more weighted in one direction or another, it's no longer a dialogue. Um... Thank you, Roseanne. I'm grateful to hear that you didn't hear us say anything unbiblical. Um, I haven't heard you do the same. Um, but I would disagree with you on perhaps, here's where we are. I would disagree with you on your definition of dialogue. It seems to me that your definition of dialogue implies there isn't disagreement. It's just simply, I share what I think, you share what you think, we validate each other and we move on. I think dialogue all actually requires disagreement and someone to be in a position of some sort in order for us to have a perspective to be able to discuss. I think maybe she's also concerned because it may sound like you and I are in the same stance and so it's coming off like it's not a dialogue. We're just saying this is where we are, like we came already with a position. Number one, like, just so you know, number one, but right before the show, we actually, he irritated me a little bit because he views things a little different in this topic. And so we're not always, like, on the same position. But if you missed this morning, this was number two, and I, and I just listed it just to help. You called me out. I did. I had to call him out, and I was irritated. And my husband had to text me, like, yo, watch out with Brian, because in this topic, 
So we weren't on the same side in terms of the, the discussion. But we also invited calls and said, you're the president, what would you do? And Brian, there were like a couple, like a few people that, that said, don't take them down, leave them on. And we were fine. It was a dialogue. We laughed with them. We yeah. had a great time because they gave some really great arguments for it. So I think if you miss that, you also don't see the exchange with listeners. And we welcomed people that completely disagreed with us. And it was funny. And they promoted Brian. I don't see why they would do that. Because <laughs> they played president and made him the secretary of press. Who would do that? <laughs> it's, it's just, it, I, I find these discussions fascinating. I'm so glad, Roseanne, you brought up these points because... It really gets to the core of even what someone believes a disagreement is, or a dialogue, pardon me. <clears throat> if we disagree on what a dialogue is, we have work to do in turn figuring that out together. And maybe when you and I talk, Roseanne, there's one way for us to do healthy biblical dialogue, and that might look totally different when Janelle and I do. Because uh, Janelle and I, off the air, sometimes we just throw down the gloves and we really start going after each other in a way that we don't on the air. Not in a mean way, Not but in, in a, a mean way, but an intense debate. Yeah. And then, like, I got to walk away. <laughs> but then we laugh and we're still friends. Yeah, we're still friends. And I learned he teaches me to see things from his perspective. He doesn't have to be fully right for me to say, wow, I, I get that point. Or I can pick this part. Yeah, dialogue is important. So. Um, Mike said, I'd love to discuss anything with it. I hope you're not mad at me, Mike. Scroll up a little bit so we can see what Mike just said. Oh, I'd love sorry. to discuss yeah, anything wow. with anyone subjectively okay. and truthfully as I see it. <laughs> Don't know why you're singling me out here, but for anyone... Oh, yeah. Sure. The reason I singled you okay. out, Mike, is because I think you're such a great example of what it looks like to have healthy disagreement and dialogue. Because, brother, there's uh, not just days where you've come in here with Christmas cookies for us and been on this with us, but there's days where you disagree with us and we all get along great. Yeah. So I'm just saying that you're an an, an a witness to the idea that we don't expect conformity here. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Roseanne's uh, going back a lot to what's going on in the country and the dissent. And that's why our country... Roseanne's is, making this a great show today. Yeah, she is. I wanted to say, you had said, it It feels like the country's burning down. But there's actually some really good discussions happening. Like, there's healthy disagreement and exploration of this topic throughout the country. It's oh, yeah. not just people angry, burning stuff down. And it... Can you talk on that a little bit? Well, like, I've seen pictures now, statues toppled and defaced. And the, it's yeah, the, sickening Yeah, to that's me. not good. <laughs> it's sickening. It's, it's mob rule. It's vandalism. It's violation of law. But I find this discussion about this Teddy Roosevelt statue at this museum absolutely compelling. Because it's forcing us to ask really hard questions about art and what it depicts and what's worthy of honor and what's not and how do we even distinguish in a statue with three people how one person's depicted and another and I mean th this is really interesting things to discuss in a healthy way and I think it's totally a different discussion from the vandalization and destruction of property they're really not the same discussion whatsoever Do you want me to read this last one? Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't seen it. The problem is that the voices of reason and what you're saying is happening, is happening. Those healthy, positive dialogues that are inducing pr understanding and growth are being eclipsed by the violence and the anger and, and the hatred that is constantly on display. I agree with, with that in terms of the media, and you can talk on this, but I was going to say that shouldn't stop the reasonable people from talking, especially in public forums, to model it, to encourage it, encourage people to let them know, man, it's happening, especially in the in the in the church. Somebody said, can you imagine if the church stopped talking about it? Like, let's stop pretending that there's not problems in the church. Yeah. Doctor Gre uh, J D Greer, he's a doctor, or Pastor J D Greer, he talked about it publicly and said, man. We've had a problem in the past. This is what we're doing about it today. Let's move forward. So, like, we shouldn't be discouraged or be afraid to go there just because other people don't know how to talk about these in a, in a reasonable way and yeah. respectful way. And honestly, we need to allow room for it to get heated now and again. Yeah. Because that's just what happens in human relationship. Yeah. But, yeah, we don't... I think it becomes a choice. Do we listen to the vitriolic extremes? Or do we choose to go to places that have healthy dialogue? Yes. And I think 
if we're overwhelmed by negative depictions, perhaps it's a consequence of our own decisions. Yeah. Not uh, necessarily a reflection of reality. And the younger generation who are very active right now, I'm very encouraged by that. I have a 17 year old. They need to see this. Like yeah. future leaders need to see us, especially in the church, doing this and modeling this so that they can take the torch moving forward. Like this is how ch positive change happens. Yeah. You know, and, and wh like we're the main ones that should be teaching them. Well, because to go with that, one of the reasons I chose this topic was because people will have no idea what it really is. The headline from the New York Times is Roosevelt statue to be removed from Museum of Natural History. And that's a concise rendering of the topic, but a total gross misrepresentation of what it's actually about. They're yeah. not removing a Roosevelt statue. No. The, the place actually was built with the, the guidance of the Roosevelt family and honors them in great lengths there. Yeah. It's about one statue. Yeah. And so you've got people on the internet everywhere. Go look that are talking about Teddy Rosen. And it's not about that. Yeah. It really isn't it's about not. that. Um, we love you all and Angie's excited. Yes, yes, yes. The church cannot be silent anymore. Yes, that is super awesome to see how the church is playing into this. Your mom put a, a thing on and she's she very proud of you. Well, why wouldn't she be? Oh, wait, she has a message. I'll read it to you because you're my friend. You got to hear, have everybody listen. Hold on. Uh, your mom is awesome, by the way. She's on my page and she's liking my stuff. Uh, she said that you're ha basically, I can't find it, but she was saying, Brian, good job. I'm so proud of you. You're helping me. Like she was saying, you're helping her uh, see these issues from a different light and get further understanding. And then she put in parentheses, uh, I love you too, Janelle. <laughs> but she's very proud Which of is you. like whatever I have to say. About I know, her. I know. <laughs> That's not true. My mom really loves Janelle. Uh, she's awesome. And by, by the way, th those of you who had some healthy dialogue with us, thank you for that. If you want to talk offline, let us know. You can send us a message, set up a time to talk by phone, or we can message back and forth. Glad you're all here. God bless you. See you tomorrow.